will get right to it. So to the audience, if you're filling out questions, um, just hand out the questions for the township candidates and we'll collect those and then we'll take a brief, brief break and then we'll collect the questions for Village Council. Okay, each of our candidates have uh, been asked to address two questions that I will read as follows. And gentlemen, have you all received the questions in advance? Okay, we'll work on that, Lamar. <laughs> There's no more advance. You've done it for a while. Let's go from this. Let's just go from it. Um, in your opinion, what are the two most important issues that newly elected Miami Township trustees would answer while in office? And the second question is, what ideas do you have to address these issues? Now there should be a mic on, okay, so when you answer the question, if you could introduce yourself and then proceed to answer the questions and then just give any other bio information that you might have or you might want to share about yourself and in particular within this, this framework. Uh, you have five minutes when you have we have a little sign, our timekeeper, when you have use three minutes and have two minutes left, is that what it is? Yes. Okay. When you have two minutes left, he'll put that sign up. So less than three minutes. Less than three minutes when he puts the sign up. You can, yes, please give your bio information and your background or anything that you want to share with us and then go into answering the two questions. Because I, I really don't want to share anything. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm assuming that the that, that my last name is starting with a C, that I'm the first one. Uh, yes, you're right. Okay. Um, it's, it's hard for me to believe that I've been doing this as long as I have. It's been 16, well, 16 years, four terms. Um, and I started because my children were volunteers at the fire department. Um, and as my son says, when your kids are old, you know you're really old. And uh, so at 69, I'm feeling really old. But uh, um, uh, let's see, I've been married for in 75, uh, God, I can't remember how long it's been, 42 years, and we had the shop for 32 years. Um, uh, and as far as serious issues addressing the, the uh, township I think that um, you have a whole series of, of uh, constant issues, uh, whether it's uh, maintaining and the, the roads or the cemeteries or um, uh, trying to build a new fire station. The real trick is to keep everything within budget. So, um, you know, we've managed to do that, but it's it hasn't been super easy. Uh, 
we've had to constantly watch our resources. Um, and, you know, the, the village has its financial problems. Um, we're constantly confronted by increasing tax uh, issues, um, cost of living. Um, everything keeps going up. But uh, so far we've managed to stay in the black, but that's because, um, well, Chris keeps a close eye, Lamar does a close eye on it. Uh, Don has been involved in various activities in town. Um, but uh, overall, it's, I want to say that it's, it's, it's an ever-changing uh, landscape. You've got, uh, uh, we spent a lot of time with the visioning process, um, but that was 10 years ago. Um, the um, economic sustainability uh, conversation came out of that visioning process, and uh, it's uh, it's an ongoing uh, process. It's it's not it's not like you have just one static issue to deal with. Uh, everything changes all the time, as you well know. Uh, the, uh, I remember when I was 32, I seriously considered whether a person my age should play rock and roll. <laughs> Now, at my age, at 69, I'm going, more power to you. you know? I mean, play rock and roll as long as you can. Thank you so much, Mark.
And there's a deep social history to that that I value. It's part of, it's a reflection of the quality of our community. So my number one issue would be to serve the volunteer fire department and rescue department. Uh, there's, we have good people that have been involved. We also have a couple generations of history, the sort of culture of the organization where the town lets it be under the radar screen. Uh, this goes, precedes current trustees in no way do I take this as a, a personal pointing of fingers. Uh, we just passed a $5 million, $5.75 million levy for building a new firehouse. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything specific about the planning that, that is wrong in, in the details, of the physical details. I think it ought to be more of a community process, more input. And it might not change anything, but there'd be a sense of ownership, a sense of engagement, people might be more likely to volunteer. Uh, so that would be one of my priorities, encouraging the community engagement, continual communication and outreach. In questions, I hope I have a chance to list a few specifics. Nothing very dramatic, but I run now, this is the third time I've run, and I've never viewed it as running against a particular trustee, it's been for the town knowing more about what's going on and being more involved, valuing the services of the township trustees. It's not just the fire department and the rescue. It's also managing two cemeteries, 14 miles of rural road, and rural zoning. Zoning's in the background. Not currently a hot issue, but it's something that the township trustees have responsibility to. In the back, there's a sheet that lists some of my experiences. Uh, and in summary, I say open communication and community outreach, support the volunteer fire and rescue squad, promote the agricultural base of the township. Thank you. So before Lamar takes the stage, if anyone has, um, are writing out their questions, this would be a good time because we'll move right into the questions afterwards. If you have a question, just raise your hand and we have people on each side of the room that will pick them up for you. Thank you. Okay, Lamar. Lamar Spracklin, been in the farming business uh, all my life. Been a trustee for 16 of the last 17 years. Um, I, uh, over the uh, last 16 years, I've uh, township trustees um, meet on the second Tuesday of the month and we get together and discuss. And then we usually have a speaker to keep us updated on things. Each winter, uh, I go to uh, Columbus, the conference, and the trustees conference in Columbus for three days. <clears throat> I attended most of those. Uh, there are seminars there that tell you about township law, uh, uh, cemeteries, roads, pavement, all this kind, of, all the different things that township trustees need to know. <clears throat> I, uh, my main concern, I guess, would be the fire, fire station. Uh, we, uh, in, in May, uh, we had a levy on the ballot to discuss, uh, and it passed uh, easily, I think 73%. The next morning, <clears throat> I, get, I could speak to the other trustees probably, but I know I realized that we've been just, just been given a, uh, a duty to, to build a fire station. Uh, 
know, we never go to fire station on the floor. We don't know anybody else around here as you. So we got into it, and uh, as time went by, uh, I became more and more interested, and I got into it, <laughs> I guess you'd say. Um, I would, it, it became a, a thing, a, a challenge, and uh, early on in the uh, process, we got an a, a, a email from the prosecutor, the prosecutor uh, is our attorney, and they said to be careful what you do. There's people out there waiting to sue you so they can make some money. If you do anything wrong, violate the sunshine laws, everything you do should be done in public, public meetings. <clears throat> so we, as we hired an architect, uh, Bonson, and other people to uh, help us out with this thing, um, um, we um, we learned that as every every meeting to answer John's question, every meeting we had that um, a decision was made about this. It was a it was a public meeting it had to be public. These meetings were advertised, and uh, every decision, like I say, was 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 public. So I really, my plan to be brief here, I'd rather give up my time to answer questions, talk about what you want to talk about instead of just taking up time. So thank you. Thank you. The gentleman passes his time to the audience. We actually do have questions in, in order, and um, this question is for all three of you. And the question is, how will you do outreach to the community next time you will put a levy bond on the ballot so that voters know more about other upcoming levies and bonds? And let's, let's, um, Start with you, Don, because you were talking about the outreach that you wanted to do with the community. I think it'll be a while before there is another uh, township levy vote, at least certainly for construction. Uh, there's no requirement on this, but there, over the years, has been some uh, courtesy from school board to village council to trustees in terms of the timing uh, of when you go to uh, go to the ballot. Uh, so I would, if I was involved, I would make sure that we didn't show up with paperwork the same month that the school board showed up with paperwork for a levy unless we consulted. Give a heads up to the other taxing authorities. Uh, it's one thing to announce a meeting and, and <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wow, pass pass the mic right away. <laughs> well he said one, one minute. He said one minute. <laughs> okay, thank you, yeah. Mike. Okay, the uh, one minute is is it's a very short period of time. <laughs> but um, the the question of how we would communicate um, truly does vary from instant to instant. Um, I would say that that the school board issue was unfortunately at the same time as the discussion about the new fire station. Although we've been talking about the new fire station for 10 years. Uh, the longer we talk about it, the more it costs. Uh, initially, I think we were talking about a million and a half. Uh, now we're talking about six million. Um, it's, it's incredible. Uh, I would say that as far as public outreach, it would depend 
Thank you. You can't finish the sentence. <laughs> you guys are really good. I would, uh, I would do it very similar to what we did on the firehouse. We had two open houses. We advertised it in the paper. I have confidence that this community is astute enough and intelligent enough that you read the paper and uh, I, I don't know what else we could have done. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone for printing nice and neat so I can actually read the cards. That's wonderful. And Mark, as to what you were saying, that one minute is very quick. Ben Franklin had once said, I'm sorry that I uh, wrote you a long letter because I didn't have the time to write a short one. It takes a lot of time to put, you know, a lot in that one minute time frame. So this is to all three as well. And um, the question is this. Will you spend all of the money that was voted to you last year for the fire station? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I have not been close in the process. Uh, I am aware that there has been back and forth with, among the trustees about the size of the station, and the number of uh, bays, for instance. Uh, I have the sense that the planning will be too the limit, that is, the, uh, they, that the township will be spending whatever has been appropriated. Uh, and I think you'll see this is pretty typical of public appropriation process. How many people work in a government agency that are making sure they spend their whole budget so it doesn't get cut next year? Uh, there's, this is not an individual sin, this is a pattern. Uh, and I don't, I can't speak to what's really needed and what it's going to cost. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I'm going to do it as efficiently as I can. I'm going to cut corners where I can. Uh, it's going to be done right, uh, efficiently. And, uh, the, right, this last week, uh, the architects and the people that we borrowed the money from are, have been discussing a contingency fund. We, uh, so, and that's a pretty big amount of money. Um, if we can do it cheaper, yes, we certainly will. But uh, at the same time, my, my position in the beginning was, you know, the square feet in each room is not important. The important thing is keep it, keep it in the budget. Keep it so we don't owe money when we get done because we don't have it. And we're going, we're running into situations that we were unexpected and uh, so we're cut someplace else to make up for that. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. The next question. Ohio is one of the few states with three levels of rural government, township, county, and state. Would you consider the cost savings that could happen with merging functions with other governments, roads with the county, and fire service with the village, obviously by covering Miami Township residents as well? And to answer your question, we do. Uh, there is a sharing of, of activities and bidding, um, whether it's specifically about the roads or whether it's about policing. Um, there, is an, there is an active interaction between township, village, and county. Um, the county engineer, we do uh, joint bidding uh, 
as far as uh, road resurfacing and materials and that sort of uh, uh, activity. I think that the advantage in the system is that there are a lot of things that need to be constantly watched and monitored. Um, one of the uh, activities that the village, what, or, let's see, each of these governmental bodies does something that would be problematic for a, a, a different group. The, as, as far as the township goes, uh, you can call and complain, you can call and see what's happened to your dollars. Um, those are all very important uh, issues. But as far as... Uh, Finish your thoughts. Yeah, what we uh, look at very closely is uh, cemetery maintenance. Uh, you know, the uh, finishing my thought is, is not. <laughs> well, that's okay. Cemetery maintenance was a good stopping point. <laughs> Actually, I think that the, the township, most, our township is still largely rural, and the rural townships across the state uh, are a good bargain. You have trustees who will go out with a chainsaw and cut that tree when they get a call. You, uh, you have more part-time workers, you have the volunteer spirit, not just literally in the department, but figuratively in relationships between trustees and property owners. Uh, there may be other issues about bookkeeping, about auditing, where there'd be some efficiencies that I don't, that I'm not aware of. But <clears throat> I think the closer you are to the service you're providing, the more likely you are to have uh, frugality. I don't know the current, the most recent purchases of equipment by the township, but I know they used to always look at a used truck, for instance. And when I was on village council, it was always had to be new equipment. Thank you, Don. To answer your question, no, absolutely not. Uh, local uh, government begins at the local level. Don't give that up. I told you I would be brief. <laughs> A man of his word. Can, uh, can I use his... Uh... <laughs> I'd like to give my time to this. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Uh, the, the question of frugality um, is, is part of my rambling thought. Uh, the issue of spending. We spend every penny that we have as, but we try to do it in a thoughtful way. Um, Chris uh, watches every, every penny in terms of uh, inappropriate taxing, uh, Lamar's time is up. Thank you. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, this is to all three of you again. And Lamar, let's start with you this time. <laughs> Some people would like to see more professionals at MTFR rather than volunteers, in part to provide better quality care to citizens. EMT volunteers are required to meet so many standards. Are they not worth paying for their labor? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Well, it is a trend uh, for fire departments throughout the country on the average to become more and more uh, paid, paid fire departments. We have been fortunate to have the volunteers we have. I, I've been, a, they, people can say what they want, but I've been a trustee for, I think it's like 16 years, 17 years. I have never once had anybody call me and complain about our EMT. We have a, a very good EMT, uh, and I, 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 I just can't admire them enough. Uh, if you had professionals and paid them more, I wonder if I maybe wouldn't get some phone calls then. Thank you. Uh, in this world of acronyms, that's Emergency Medical Technician and Miami Township Fire Rescue MT. Uh, I don't know enough to have be confident in answering that. Uh, I would not want to forbid volunteering. Uh, certainly the trend of more hours required, uh, the more training that is, uh, would argue towards more professional. Uh, but if we're having good care and if people are, are able to volunteer, uh, that, that's the main thing is, is the, the quality of the service. Thank you. I think that uh, the, the simple answer would be that it's, it's the time and training and thought that go into the quality of the service. Um, and right now, I think that the issue of uh, the amount of time the expectation, the amount of training that goes into each uh, volunteer is really the, the question. Uh, part of our need for a new building uh, is to meet that, those, those standards in terms of uh, uh, overnight, uh, sleeping arrangements, um, the care of uh, turnout gear, that sort of thing. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We are doing really well on time. We have another 25 minutes um, with these gentlemen. If you have any more questions, please put them on the card, raise your hand, and we'll get them taken care of. The next question, gentlemen, to all three of you, and this time let's start with Don. Please provide specific, and specific has been underlined, ideas of how you will work with council to realistically affect affordability. And I'm assuming that's housing. I don't know who, who asked uh, that question, but I'm assuming it's Housing affordability? Let's go with that. Okay, you decide what affordability. <laughs> they said housing, utilities, taxes. You've got me stumped. Uh, I have. The, the way I see cooperating with village council is on broader land issue, land use issues. Uh, I can't get very specific. Maybe there are ways we can uh, do joint purchasing that would uh, increase volume so there'd be less expense. Uh, I, I don't have a good answer. Thank you. I, I think that um, in terms of specifics, uh, all I can really do is talk about 
things that we've lost. Um, we, in the time period that I've been here, raising my children and that sort of thing, we have gone from 5,000 good paying jobs to what, a couple of hundred. Um, the, the tax base has changed. And that is an issue that uh, we really need to address and do everything that we can in terms of developing that, that base. You can't keep expecting people to uh, pay more. Although I think that, that paying more is, is not really the issue. It's, it's what you get for your money. Thank you. <laughs> Mark, I uh, uh, addressed uh, tax issues. Um, we got our letters lately, property owners did, about the increase in taxes, maybe 20, 30 percent in some cases. Uh, I, I would remind anybody or tell anybody that over the last three or four years farmland price taxes have gone up 300 percent in some cases more yes 300 percent in the last four or five years this year they say it's going to go down maybe 24 percent because of CAUV now when farmland taxes go down residential taxes have to go up so the county has a equal amount of money so that's one reason your taxes are going going up. Uh, we have uh, green space all, all around the village, the village which I approve of, and I'm certainly in favor of it. But at the same time, the village doesn't have room to grow. So as it grows, it just gets more expensive. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we have our last four questions here. Uh, again, to all three of you. How do you anticipate that rural zoning may be called to change in the next few years? Who's first? You, you guys get to decide this one. <laughs> Would you repeat what the rural zoning called to? How do you anticipate that rural zoning may be called to change in the next few years? I don't see it changing in the next few years. Uh, we have a zoning commission that uh, uh, made up of five people. The law states a zoning commission. People have to have to come from without within a without. Out in the township, people in the village corporation cannot be on the zoning and the BCA. Uh, so, and, th and those people work, they meet every month changing the, regula the zoning regulations. And uh, they, need to, they need to get uh, the credit that's, that's due them for, for doing what they do. And these are made up of farmers that are family farmers, that have had their families have been on these farms for decades, and they, uh, I, I know, I, I know them not all personally, but I know them by reputation. They don't, they want to keep their farms, and so I don't really see it changing all that much. Thank you. I'm not aware of current pressure to change our zoning code in terms of lot size, road frontage required uh, in the agricultural zones, or I'm not aware of any pending action to uh, take a, a swath of the township and switch it from agriculture to uh, one of the rural residence zones. Uh, I'm in favor of 
infilling within the village so you don't have to extend <laughs> utilities further so you have more efficient use of current infrastructure. Thank you. Um, I think that um, in terms of zoning changes, uh, rural zoning changing, um, a lot depends on those areas that uh, attach to the village in terms of, of our zoning concepts, in terms of uh, potential growth and job creation, that sort of thing. Um, I do think that it needs to be remembered that a lot of people come to town because of the green space that we maintain between the uh, bike path, uh, Glen Helen, John Bryan, Clifton Gorge. Uh, those are important uh, generators of uh, financial support. Well, that leads us right into our next question. And that is, gentlemen, Yellow Springs is planning to update the zoning guidelines for both commercial and residential areas of the community. What resource efficient design and management practices would you recommend for integrating natural green space areas with plans for economic development? In a minute, <laughs> Uh, although I'm not a farmer, uh, the history of farming has seen many changes, and I can imagine, I can, in weeks, there are some examples already in the township, but certainly in the wider county where there are specialty farms, more intense use of buildings they already have on the farms. Uh, I think we may be seeing a uh, agricultural shifts towards more specialties, more value-added activities on the farm beyond the growing of the crops. Uh, that is, more agriculture business in the agriculture zones. Thank you. I think that... Uh, Hold the mic, Mark. Boy, that... That question was a really complicated question. Would you like to hear it again? Yes, I would. Yellow Springs is planning to update the zoning guidelines for both commercial and residential areas of the community. What resource efficient designs and management practices would you recommend for integrating natural, uh, natural green space areas with plans for economic development. Wow. Um, I would say that in terms of specifics, I, I would have to agree with Don that uh, you're going to see more creative solutions to old problems. but. The, the old problem is one of how do you pay the bills? And what you do to pay the bills um, is what separates uh, people, men from machines. I think that uh, you can have constant development in terms of machines uh, as part of the solution, it's part of the efficiency, but uh, when it comes to solving a problem, that uh, is what people do best. Community has been trying to an economic development for, since I can remember, uh, it seems like it's going the other direction. Um, 
So obviously, what we've been doing is not working. On my farm, when something isn't working, I change the management, I change the system. Um, uh, for example, uh, the, the tax benefits that these um, businesses can uh, maybe, um, maybe get, they're not, obviously not getting now, they're not coming to town. Another issue that I've heard about lately is the, uh, the, the, um, the web uh, site. Uh, uh, a new app on around many people cannot get uh, uh, Wi-Fi in their, their fast service on their internet. And if, if people can't get fast service on their internet, they're not going to come to this community. Uh, and, and, uh, because it, it just doesn't work fast during peak times, that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Lamar. Lamar, when you're talking, hold the, the mic just a little bit away from your mouth, not quite as close, because we're getting a little feedback. So as, as many levels as that last question was, this one, gentlemen, is straight to the point. Why do you think the public is not attending your meetings? <laughs> I think that uh, they're boring. <laughs> I think that's why people don't come. I, I think that people do occasionally come if there's a, a real issue. Um, when we were talking about the uh, drainage problems on Carolyn Lamont Drive, there was um, quite a large donor. Um, it just depends on whether there is a community problem or not. And uh, mostly there is not. Um, we try to patch the roads and try to maintain services, whether it's the fire department, um, at a level that people uh, can stay home and have a have a drink and watch the show on TV. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's pretty boring. I will say the meetings tend to be less than an hour, uh, and since I don't know if my complaint couple years ago was the trigger or not, but the meetings are videotaped. That, that's a change over the last two years. But, uh, there's a symbolism, however, in that the door is locked. If you knock on the door, you immediately get in. And I'm told that there's security issues around it being a firehouse and whatever, and that may be the case. But it would sure be nice, while the meeting's in session, if you could just walk in the room. Uh, and it would also be nice if the township cooperated with the village on better cable and let's support fiber optics. <laughs> Thank you, Don. These guys don't want to come here. Let me that question, please. <laughs> okay, don't hold it quite so close, the mic quite so close to your mouth, Lamar. Uh, the question, yeah. why do you think the public is not attending your meetings? Uh, since I've uh, been on the trustees, uh, the only time when you have hardly anybody there is when there's something controversial. Um, so we really haven't had I mean, things that are controversial. We just do our business and routine business and we take care of it and, um, I, uh, we are solvent uh, we don't really have any financial problems uh, serious problems um, so uh, why would people come you can see it on the, on the, on the internet miamitownship.net if you go there you can you can get a tape of the meetings. So why leave your, like Mark says, why leave your living room if you care to go 
sure that's, you know, if anything important is going on, it will be in the newspaper. It'll, it'll get around, don't worry. Thank you. And our final question might be the answer to the previous question, and that is, trustees and council meet, meet at the same time. Why not arrange to meet at different times so voters can attend both meetings and be better informed? That's a, a good point. And it's something that uh, has been mentioned over the years. And we had, um, at one point, we were working very much at having um, real contact with, with the community council, with village council, uh, and improving our communication between the the village and the township. And that's coming back, but uh, as far as changing the meeting night, <coughs> it seems to be a point of contention. <laughs> I, I really, uh, I would not hesitate to change our meeting night. I would be glad to change so they weren't meeting at the same time as village council. Uh, and this is an, something that hadn't occurred to me, and this is an example. If someone has a good idea, I want to support it. I don't have any problem with doing that. Uh, uh, however, you know, it would make a very long meeting. <laughs> uh, I don't. I've been a trustee, so I don't go to council meeting. I don't really have a reason to. I have confidence that they can take care of their business without me. And uh, so, um, it would take a long, long meeting. Like I would say, ours usually last maybe an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, if we had insurance people there giving bids or one thing or another. Our, our record is seven minutes. So, <laughs> I, I don't think it would have worked out too well to set through each other's business for the whole evening, but I'm not opposed to it. Lamar, I think the question was re referring to that the meetings be at different times so community members can go to each meeting instead of having to choose to go to one or the other. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> I guess the question is who's going to change? <laughs> and on that, I think we will end. Maybe give a hand to our candidates. Gentlemen, thank you so 